Hello and welcome to The Mission. I'm your host, Jameer Howerton. And as bonus content, we're so honored to be joined for an Hall of Fame exclusive interview with no other than Houston Oilers legend, Black College Football Hall of Famer, Jackson State's own Pro Football Hall of Famer, Mr. Robert Brazil. Mr. Brazil, thank you for joining us right here on The Mission. And thank you for that great introduction, man. When you talk and call my name, I, you know, too many things give me chills. That you know, when you start to naming off all those accolades, you know, I, I go to shaking like it's the national anthem. I'm ready to go down on the kickoff or something and get this started. How you doing this morning? Man? I, I'm doing. I'm doing so well this morning. I'm so honored to have you on, and all those accolades are so well deserved. And you know, Mr. Brazil, before we jump into this. Uh, which I hope to be a very, uh, our viewers, I hope they find it a very deep, inspirational uh, conversation. But then, you know, we're going to have some fun and lighten the mood. Uh, but before we, you know, get the conversation started, um, the football world is saddened by the passing of Pro Football Hall of Famer Gail Sayers. Um, Mr. Baker, CEO, president of the Pro Football Hall of Fame, um, had a statement this week. The entire Pro Football Hall of Fame family mourns the passing of Gail. We will forever keep his legacy alive to serve as inspiration for future generations. And, um, and he also made it clear that the Hall of Fame flag will fly at half staff until his body is laid to, less, uh, ra ra laid to rest. Excuse me. Um, your thoughts and reflections on what Gail Sayers meant to the game of football, sir? First of all, you know, Gail, you know, what else could happen in 2020? Now we, you know, we done lost a lot of great, great people. And you know, the news when Gail hit, I started thinking about my friend. One of the ones up there, you know, Gail want to talk about Gail Sales all the time. You know, Gail Sales was his blueprint. He wanted to do what Gail did and better. And you know, for him to pass away, I said, well, it's a good thing about this. Well, him and Walter can get together in heaven now, and they can talk it all over because they both had a great Hall of Fame career. I mean, you couldn't ask for a better person. If you met Gail, you met a, I said, an idol of a, of a person. Very patient, kept a smile on his face, always was had a, to, to have something nice to say about it. I never seen or heard the guy say nothing bad anybody say anything bad about Gail Sayer, we will miss him. And like Mr. Baker have always said, we will preserve his history in the, at the Hall of Fame. He will always have a place at the Hall of Fame when, you, where, where our mission statement says so many great things. Wow. Wow. Thank you for that, sir. Thank you. Well, uh, switching gears a bit, congratulations is definitely in order for the Jackson State family. Gold Jacket uh, Deion Sanders being named the new football head coach of Jackson State University. Um, is it safe to say that prime time uh, goes to the sonic boom, Dr. Doom? <laughs> well, let me tell you something. You know, I was sitting, I was uh, to a last, I think it was Friday evening. My mom and dad was here because of the bad weather. You know, we're in kind of salad was coming through. And my phone rang and I said, Who in the devil is this? So I picked my phone up. He said, Mr. Brazil, Go Jacket, Hall of Famer 312. This is Dion Sanders. I'm what? I said, What's going on, man? I said, So it's not a, uh, a rumor. No, he said, It's not a rumor. I want to be the first to tell you that uh, uh, Monday we're going to, I'm going to announce my candidacy for head coach of Jackson State. Do I have your support? I said, Dion, just you mentioned it, you got my support. You know, I was blessed when I came through Jackson State. I had three ex football players as a head as a coach. Bob Hill played with the Baltimore Colts, which my head coach. Ben McGee and Robert Hughes both had played in the NFL and the things that they brought to the table the secret that they gave to me as a defensive player, I was in, I was ready for the pros when I left Jackson State. So for for Dion to get this man, I don't know what is what what where it's going to go, but I know one thing: you got a son. I don't know Jamel from the next guy, but if you got a son in high school and uh, senior in high school, Dion Sanderson, Rob Brazil, Jackson Slater, 
and maybe with Lim Barnett knocking on your door. We need to get your kids back into Jackson, Mississippi. Will you let us in? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's heavy. I just want to ask you that question. Would you let us in to talk to your kids? I, I, I would most definitely let you in the door to talk to my son, if that was my case. Uh, Jackson State is no stranger to producing Hall of Fame talent. And I know there, you know, like you mentioned, Lynn Burney, Jackie Slater, Walter Payton, and yourself. And I'm quite for certain there's a long list of players that have made it to the NFL that's definitely playing on the next level. Um, you know, you, 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 you talked about how Jackson State um, produced you and got you ready to play in the league. Let's dive deep and talk about that. What were those principles? What was that work work ethic like there? Well, the work ethic started, I guess, you know, I give a lot of credit to that guy that boy at number 34. You know, I didn't know Walter from nobody. Uh, you know, to make a long story short, I had signed a letter with a tent to go to Troy State. And, uh, you know, back, you got to think, it was back in the 70s, my mom had never seen a two-piece two swimsuit. So we went up to visit to our state, and everybody was, was suntanning. Mm. My mom said, no, he can't go to school here. <laughs> <laughs> turn the car around. He told my dad, turn the car around. And we ended up the next week going up to Jackson. I had never met Bob here. I heard great things about Bob here. And my best friend, which was named Ricky Young, Played with the Minnesota Vikings and the San Diego Chargers. We know we because we was A said we wanted to go to school together. We knock on Bob Hill's door. Bob Hill gets up about seven thirty that morning, looks down at Ricky Nag and say, Hey son, you play football? He said, I play football, coach. He said, Hey son, do you play fullback? He said, Coach, I play football. Wherever you need me, I can play. Bob Hill said, Well, you can get I give you a scholarship. I said, Coach, what about me? He said, Son, Rob was there, I don't know you. I know your cousin, but I don't know. You got to make my team. That's all I needed. Wow. That's all I needed for to push me. To, you know, I started working out even harder. And I met this guy named Walter. I was sneaking out of the dorm one day. Because after workout, I would sneak out and do extra work. Like run the hills or go climb something. And Walter was doing the same thing. And it was a challenge every day. Who could I work each other? And we would build a relationship. Me and Walter did so many things at the practice. We came, we could write a book about it. Because we always feel, I always feel, I lived in Mobile at the time. And in Jackson, Mississippi, is, which is about 187 miles, I always felt I was in so, such good type of shape. I could jog from Jackson to Mobile if my mama called me and told me she needed <laughs> I know that's right. Did you did you did you ever do that though? Or... No, I didn't ever get that phone call. She never needed me. <laughs> <laughs> but when you you know you you but when, really when you look and mention you know the hiring of Dion, you know what what does that mean to the future of HBCUs? Well, it means a lot. I mean, first of all, we got uh, a name, we got some experience, we got character, we got love for the game. But Dion, Dion said God sent him there. Mm. I don't know. You know, that's deep right there. Mm -hmm. That's very deep. And all I can say is that I love D. That's one of the things we say, love D, Jackson State. That's one of the mottoes there. Right. Man, let me tell you something. I'm going to go and I'm talk to every football player, everybody that's a gold, what we call a J Club member. We're going to be there. We're going to try to fill that stand up for him. And that's saying a lot for the economy. We needed this for not just for Jackson, for the Southwest Athletic Conference. The SWAC needed something like this to just, you know, bring us back. Right. I mean, all over America right now, they're talking about Deion Sanders and Jackson State and the Southwest Athletic Conference. That is huge. That is huge. Huge. Yes, it is. You know, for for you know, for us to get that recognition, and that opened the eyes that because people really don't know the history of where two number ones came out of a small black college. Whoever has heard of that? Walter Payton went fourth in the first round. Bob Brazil went sixth in the first round. Almost little small black college named Jackson State. I always tell the kids, I don't care if you're a diamond, they'll find you in in Buck Tussle, Mississippi. To play in the pros if you're a diamond. Wow. 
<laughs> That's right. They say if you a diamond, you're gonna find it in the rough. And 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 <laughs> it, it's just amazing. And when you look at historical black university and really study uh you know how schools came about you know i i i went to university of maryland eastern shore we were a former land grant school and you mm-hmm. look at why these black universities uh um, were, were, were established so there really is a lot of responsibility and a legacy that is it that that Deion sanders is responsible for but not only Deion, like like you said yourself Lynn Burney, Jackie Slater, um, going back and 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 really sharing the rich history and imparting that wisdom to the younger generation. What is that like when you do get a chance to look in the eyes of these young men and really I- I- explain that 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 story? Well, you know, when I retired, you know, you heard my my uh, induction speech. I talked about the the telephone calls and the knocks on the door. You know, there's a lot of things happened for me personally as Robert Brazil, who was calling me, inviting me to do something, or uh, knock on the door telling me I was you know, not starting in the NFL. So, you know, I look at these kids. I, after my retirement, I came back to Mobile, and I started working in the Mobile Public School System. And these kids did not know nothing about Robert Brazil. So for the last 26 years, when I was, you know, that I spent in the system, I was giving them that black history. I was saying that you can leave Mobile, Alabama, or Pritchett, Alabama, and end up in the pros. I didn't know I was going to get a gold jacket. I was hoping that I was going to get a gold jacket. I knew I had did everything to be deserving of a gold jacket, but I did not know I was ever going to get a gold jacket. The use of knowledge didn't exist no more. And my odds of getting in the, in the Hall of Fame was slimming down to none. So I, 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 I shared my history with these people. And my high school guy that I coached at and was around, we have signed over 25 players to a professional athlete because I think I had something to do with it because I set the example for these guys going and developing that skill and going to college to Alabama, to Auburn, to Jackson State, and the rest of these places to get, you know, get recognition. Dion is going to do the same thing for Jackson. With his name, with his notoriety, with his followers, and the people that's going to go out and support him, that's going to bring, like I had a Walter Bray, Walter Payton to bring the scouts there. Now we got a Dion that's going to bring the world where to Jackson State. Mm. Well, congratulations. I'm excited, you know, it's, it's, uh, primetime definitely showed up for his presser, you know, in, in classic primetime, uh, fashion, Sonic Boom was playing. Yeah, I hate I wasn't, I hate I wasn't there, man, but, you know, we, we um, you know, so close, but, uh, so far, we need to be right here because of the weather that was going down in Mobile and the planet, but he, he did it, he did it first class. First class, first class all the way. You know, you mentioned that when you were retiring from the Houston Oilers, um, early early last week, I got a chance to talk to one of your fellow Gold Jackets that as you were exiting the Houston Oilers, he was entering the Houston Oilers. And that's Pro Football Hall of Famer Warren Moon, who finally uh, got his just due in the NFL after uh, a, a, a long ladder that he had to climb to get where he needed to go. And, and as you know, he was the first African-American quarterback to be enshrined in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Um, first and foremost, before we dive in and talk deeper into that legacy and how we're seeing it today, you know, just twofold, um, when you, when you, when you were leaving the NFL and, 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 and talk about the, you know, some of the struggles that you've made of face, you know, during, over the course of your career, when it, when it dealt with race. Well, uh, first of all, you know, I was blessed to, uh, to be raised right. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I was, you know, I'm a, a, a true Baptist. I'm gonna tell you that, you know, I didn't, I didn't, you know, sometimes you have to turn the other cheek. I had a purpose in life, and I didn't have, I wasn't gonna let anything keep me from meeting my goals that I had set in life. Uh, I didn't face, you know, like I say, you know, I went to a predominantly white school in, in, in high school, 
and it was only five blacks there. <laughs> wow. So yes. I did that. I'm gonna just I'm gonna leave it just like that. With okay. Only five blacks. We integrated the high school my uh, sophomore year in high school, and I had to have a national guard to walk me to and from class. Oh my God! So when my mom made that decision for me not to go up there to uh, Trust State, uh -huh. it was more than the, it was more than the swimsuits that was there. She wanted me to go to a HBCU school. She wanted me to go to a black college, and that's probably one of the best moves that she had ever one of the best decisions she could have made for for me. Because who look, look what it turned out to be? I mean, absolutely. Her, her answers, her, her prayers, her answers. Her, her doubt. She wanted me to go to a safe haven. I tell people that when you go to these HBCU schools, you got so many people that cares about you. Not only on the football field, but in the city, in the classroom. It's a safe haven when you can send off a a, a a teenager and when they come back to your house as a man. Mm. You know, you got, you know, I tell the story, me and Walter had, was playing an East West Shrine game, you know, for the first time we out in, in California, we get off the elevator, this guy puts, a, the officer puts a shotgun to my nose. We had the high regency getting off the elevator, brother. He tells me to hit the floor, and then he took it and put it behind my neck. Somebody out there was robbing somebody, but luckily, the guy at the front desk stopped this guy from hurting us. Well, see, we didn't never experienced that at, at 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 Jackson. We was I was I was I was I was I, was, I, I feel like I could go walk the streets at night. I do whatever I could. I had that safe haven at that HBCU that everybody looked out for each other, and that was the difference I think in me gave me the opportunity to develop all of my skills because I didn't have no worries. <laughs> No scares. I had been scared all through my high school years about, you know, this and that. Then I, my first time outside of that, I get this to happen. What that tell me? See, I'm a senior, I told all of my kids, go to, go to, go to HBCU. I can't make you go. It's your choice. But go to HBCU school. I'm paused because it's just, it's, 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 uh, I'm at a, a at a loss of words and B it just man. I've been through I've been through enough, but it, it, it made it. I think it uh, kept me pushing myself to just stay focused, stay disciplined. That's what football does to 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 you, man. I, I keep telling people, or uh, what football has done for me, I could never repay it for. It made me the man that I am today, man. When you can stay focused, stay self-disciplined about what you want in life, I try to tell that to all the kids that I come across. If you want something, work at it. Don't let nobody take you away from it. It's very profound and it's so inspirational because it could have went left really yes. quick. And we're seeing it every day how situations escalate and they just go left so quick. And to hear this story and to know the end result of, as you mentioned earlier in our conversation, number fourth overall, number six overall from this historical black university and overcoming adversity at every turn of just A, being a student athlete and B, just being a young kid to experience yes, that. Yeah, it was. It oh, was, man. You know. We stand on your it shoulders, was. sir. We, we, and I say we, we all stand on your shoulders that have come before us and that have gone through that. Oh, man. Thank you, man. Oh, man. And, and, oh, and we just see how it progressed today as we were talking about Warren Moon and you look at week one of the historic number of African-American quarterbacks that started. Ten. Guys. Ten. 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 You know. You know? Uh, 
uh, man, this, you know, when you look at this and you see where we at, then you look back and say, where we come from. It's a journey, man. It's a hard fought journey, but you know, like I say, the sun is, the sun shining is at the end of the, it still is at the end of the tunnel. We're going to get, we still ain't there yet. Right, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> But we're here to talk. But you're here to talk about it and share these rich stories for my generation can sit there as a griot and learn from the griot, and we can sit well, at the floor and learn and and listen, and we could do what we better. To, what we need to learn is that never say no. <laughs> Somebody tell you you can't, you say I can. <laughs> That's right. You know, never. You know, I, I I tell people all the kids I can't do that. I say, you know, as a kid, my uncle taught me I can't. Got drowned in Eight Mile Creek. I saw him go down. So he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. I like that. That's that's great. That's great. So, you know, that's a little water hole. We used to swim in a place called Eight Mile Creek. And he's, because, I, you know, I come from a baseball city. You know, Hank Ayers and all these guys, Willie Mays, Cleon Jones, uh, Billy Weeb, all these in my neighborhood as a kid. I could not hit that curveball. He said, Bubba, I can't. I said, uh, Uncle Odell, I can hit that curveball. He said, I can't got drowned in Bubba. Because that was my nickname back then, was Bubba. Now it's Dr. Doom, but <laughs> Bubba was my nickname. I can't got drowned in Eight Mile Creek. Didn't you see him go down last week? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's great. Well, well, well. That's a great. That's a great segue. Yeah, that's a great segue because you know, like like I said earlier, I know we were going to get deep in this conversation, but that's a great segue because I want to talk to you about you know Doctor Doom. How did you get that name, Doctor Doom? Well, you know, my name to me, Robert Lorenzo Brazil Jr., meant a lot to me. It was very important for me because my dad gave me that name for a reason. But I was playing in Chicago in the college all-star game. You don't know anything about that because you're not old enough. Back in the 70s, the college all-stars would play the Super Bowl champion of that year in Chicago, Illinois. So here I am, a senior, Walter, more guys, all the seniors up there getting ready to play the Pittsburgh Steelers. It's a guy from SC, which was a linebacker. His name is Richard Wood. He played middle linebacker. So he had a nickname. His name nickname was that name. We had another linebacker there from Jackson State named John Tate. We called him Crazy Man. And he was having breakfast at this table. They, you know, he had, you know, breakfast for the All Stars every morning. And he was looking in the Chicago Tribune. In the Chicago Tribune, is a cartoon character named Dr. Doom. Okay? So he calls me and said, hey, Brazil, I got a nickname for you. Dr. Doom, you fit. They, you know, that, 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 that's, I like that nickname for you. I said, Dr. Doom? <laughs> but sitting at the end of the table is who? Howard Cosell. Howard looks up at Richard and says, Richard, you know that that name fits him more than what you think it fits him. Uh, you don't know this young boy from Jackson State, but that doom part, take that doom part, Richard, let's break this down. Take the D, death, the next O, own, the next, uh, next O, offense, and the M, men, death on offensive men. Who does it better than him? <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's how I stuck and how Richard and everybody could and it just blew it up from being known. So I'm known as alias Dr. Doom. That's amazing. Well, with that being said, Dr. Doom, I love the way we're we're, we're turning this corner and having some fun now uh, with the excitement surrounding the NFL. But I want to know, taking a trip down memory lane, I need some top fives. I need some top fives before we let you go. Um, Dr. Doom's top five toughest running backs that you faced over the course of your career. First, I'm going to give from one to five, one being the best, and five mean I didn't, you know, I just, you know, just had fun with you. 
My first first running back is gonna be Walter Payton. I got to get credit where credit due. Then my next one's gonna be I never played against him, but I practiced with him. Will be Earl Campbell, Tony Dorsett, uh, the one from Oakland. What's his name? Uh, uh, I can't think of his name. Mike Pruitt and Greg Pruitt. I can go down the list of. Uh, What's my uh You're talking about um you're talking about Bo Jackson? Bo Jackson too young. Too young. Bo I'm sorry. Yeah. got knocked out. I'm not <laughs> Bo Jackson out. <laughs> Bo Jackson went hard, he, you know, he's he, 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 he a baby. I'm talking about the the real I'm gonna give I'm gonna give credit to everybody forget about one guy. This guy probably was gonna tear the NFL up and I just thought Joe Delaney, Kansas City. He died saving a kid. Uh, uh, he was a kid was drowning. Joe Delaney dove in the water to get him and drowned. This guy made me and Hollywood Henderson hug each other. We missed the tackle. Wow. Wow. He was great. I think he got 197 yards against the East Ball that his rookie year. He was going to be unbelievable good. That's amazing. Look, up, look up Joe Delaney and you'll ask him. He's right. Well, 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 our our our, our loyal listeners, I'm I'm gonna look him up, and you heard it right there from Dr. Doom. Look up. These are the top five toughest running backs that Dr. Doom um face over the course of his career and he made it very clear and correct me rightfully so that uh um um Bo Jackson is a baby. <laughs> Yeah, he's a baby. He's, he's much younger than me. Yes, sir. <laughs> and lastly, lastly, I got to get Dr. Doom's top five toughest quarterbacks that you faced over the course of your career. I'm going to give credit again, Wes, Duke. We, we, could, we could beat Terry, but we couldn't beat him at the right time. Terry Bradshaw, um, the, uh, my quarterback from... Um, Oh man, I'm having one of them moments, guy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm six or seven. Uh, from the Cowboys, the Navy guy, what's his name? Roger, uh, is it Roger Starbuck? Roger Starbuck. Roger Starbuck. Roger Starbuck was a great one. Um, they don't get too much. I'm going to stay in the air. Kenny Stable, who mm. was in his prime, he was great. Um, Oh man, I'm having those. But see, I, I, you know, my thing was, I, you know, I love stacking quarterbacks. <laughs> you know, so I'm, I'm, I'm putting like ART would say. Uh, it depends on what kind of day I was having. I don't think two minutes would have a good day. <laughs> 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 but um, I put Roger and Terry at the top. Okay. Yeah, as far as and. Um, Oh man, I can't. I can't think of too many of those. Guys. Okay, okay, okay. But 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 we 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 do have we do have Terry Roger and Kenny Stabler, the Snake, right? He wasn't he known yeah, the as snake. the Snake? Yeah. Anderson from Cincinnati. A- Anderson from Cincinnati. Okay, okay. Wow. I gotta go. I'm going to my Hall of Fame wall. I got some, some shots going here that I can uh, make my memory recall. I got Roger Stop back. Brian, uh, Kenny Stable. Hmm. I got a shot. I wish I could, you could see. Well, no, but that's great because I know, I know, I know we're having this this bonus content and this and and it's an exclusive phone interview. But the beautiful thing about this, you know, we can always take pictures and we can show pictures over top of what you're doing. So we got to get you to take a picture standing next to your I, 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 graveyard may not be the right word to say, but the sack, uh, Doctor Doom's uh, sacks quarterbacks would be a, a good way to put it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we need you right by where all the quarterbacks that you sacked to take a picture, and you can send it to us, and then we could we could we can attach that picture along with this interview. That'll be great content. <laughs> That'll be yeah. great content. That'll be really great content. Billy Kidman, I got a nice one on Billy Kidman. I got ejected for hitting Billy Kidman so hard. 
<laughs> <laughs> you mentioned Lawrence Taylor. What was it like? Because everybody, you know, like for my generation that didn't get a chance and, you know, we got to go back and, you know, really dig through the archives to watch, you know, the footage. But I, I, I always hear that before there was a Lawrence Taylor, there was Dr. Doom. So when you when you when you did get that chance to meet Lawrence Taylor, what was that exchange like? Well, it started, you know, I had an agent named uh, Jerry Argovich and another, he worked along with Gene Burroughs, which was Kenny Burroughs' brother. Mm -hmm. And they were, they was recruiting Lawrence as, you know, and Lawrence said, I would meet both of y'all if y'all can get Robert Brazil to come up to my, my uh, college. But then Gene loaded up, flew up there to meet him. Me and Lawrence had a powwow. I know for like four hours. I mean, he just buzzed my brain. I'm not knowing this guy's gonna take my game to another level. He just, <laughs> <laughs> well, we just feeling, you know, he idolized the thing I was doing in the league during that time. So we talked and we, you know, we shared all type of information on this. And uh, we just, and we ended up signing him, in other words, make a long story short. When it was time for me to be presented at the Hall of Fame, John McClain could tell you exactly how this went down. He called Lawrence Taylor. And Lawrence normally don't call nobody back. <laughs> <laughs> Lawrence called him right back and said, John, what's up? He said, man, I want to know, do you think Robert Zier deserved to be in the Hall of Fame? He said, if it wasn't for no Robert Zier, he was, he was, he was mean before I was mean. <laughs> mm. Now, how deep was that? That's that's very deep. That's very deep. That's very deep. And it so, really it really comes full circle, you know, to to uh, the start of our conversation, just about paying back and paying it forward. You know, giving it right. back. You know, uh, the one things that our um, Joe Horrigan, who 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 was the former vice president of of museum operations, always used to say, "You learn it, you earn it, you own it, and then you give it back. You got to share it. You got to share it. You got to share it. You got to share, share everything." And I think that's one thing that the hall is so good at doing, man. You know, uh, when you go to the Hall of Fame and you see all this historical historical thing that's just happened in that one building. For anybody to go see, if people, any sports fan has, has not visited the hall, they owe themselves or, 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 or owe themselves something. You owe yourself this, this visit to go see all the history that's in that place, man. When I went in there, I mean, it's like, I was like a kid in a candy, in, in candy store. Ooh, and him, I idolized him. Can you imagine? Uh, Dick Buckets, can you imagine? Uh, my boy Willie Lanier and all these guys, I mean, welcome you to a spot that you've been trying to get to all of your life. Man, I idolize these guys being there with, with alone that we could share the story about how we met and all this. And I tell people, I, I know me and Ray Lewis was talking and uh, when we got to know each other, I said, Ray, I got to tell you a story. You may not believe it, but it's the truth. He said, I had feeling I had felt out of love with football because of what went down in the latter part of my football career. Mm. I was walking out of my mother's house one day on a Sunday. She was watching TV. She grabbed me on the knee, said, Sit down. I said, What's up, Ma? She said, Sit down. I want you to sit and watch football with me today. I said, Mother, you know I don't watch football on Sunday no more. She said, Sit down. And when she said like that, no other word but sit down. So I was sitting there, and who was playing? Ray Lewis. I saw Ray Lewis sack a quarterback, make an interception, and probably made about nine tackles back to back. Bah, 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 bah. She said, he wears your number better than you. Not knowing who's going to go in the Hall of Fame with me. Huh? <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> who's going to go in the Hall of Fame with me? Ray Lewis. And I told Ray Lewis that story, man, they're both fine. Oh, wow. That's amazing. That's amazing. That's amazing. Well, I, I am so honored and appreciative of you giving us your time today and just the lessons that are learned 
um, are very important during this during this time of healing. And we're dealing with a pandemic. We're dealing with a lot of social injustice. But football has a way, and those life lessons have a way of having us take a step back and to learn and to hear the rich stories. And I thank you so much for sharing today, sir. Thank you. I want to thank you, man, because like you said, you know, it's been a rough year. A very rough year. I mean, with this happening and that happening. But I think if we can have some outlets, we have some things that people are going to get them to do, like, you know, listen to your pop, hop, your pop, hop, your, oh, okay. your, 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 your stuff, man. You do, y'all do a great job at the, uh, at the hall. And I want to thank you for having me on. And I can't, the words can't say, keep your good work up. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Robert Brazil right here on the mission.